God does bless the United States of America. He has blessed us for 200 and some years. But God does something else for the United States of America. And let me boil it down. He does something for you. God loves you more than he loves a country. God loves you so much that he sent his son to die on a cross. See, when we think about God country, we honor our country. We love our country. And God has blessed our country. But Jesus didn't die for the United States of America. Jesus died for you. Our myth this week is every road leads to heaven. As long as you're sincere, as long as you're faithful, as long as you mean to do well, it makes no difference who you believe in or what you do. As long as you're sincere, you'll end up in heaven. You ever heard that? Well, let me tell you. That's totally opposite of what the Bible says. The Bible says there's one way to heaven. And so we're going to talk today about heaven. And on this Memorial Day, when we look at the, the, the cemeteries that we honor and all those that have passed away, all those military men and women that have passed away, they passed away for a purpose. They passed away serving their country for a purpose of freedom for our country and the freedom of religion. So we can stand up and proclaim the message of Jesus Christ. That old rugged cross has been trampled under feet to our world that does not love Jesus and a church that takes Jesus for granted. Sometimes the old rugged cross, sometimes the word of God is not listened to and is not communicated. But what we must do is we have to understand it is the way to heaven. Not a way. It is the way to heaven. And it's exclusive. I, you know, I didn't write the Bible. I, I would say I want everybody to go to heaven. But there's a purpose for what Jesus did. See, because it's so exclusive. It means that, that God had a plan to redeem mankind from their sin. It wasn't, I think, of an idea that, that I want everybody to worship me. Because God could create us as robots and worship him because we have to. But God didn't do that. What God did, God allowed all of us to have a free will. And in that free will, we have a choice whether to serve him or whether to not serve him. Whether to worship him or not worship him. To whether believe in him or not believe in him. It is your choice. And God is not going to make you do anything. But what God has asked us to do is to trust or believe in him. That's why the world does not like Christianity because it is so exclusive. You're not having an option. It's not going to church. It's not belonging to a church. It's not giving to a church. The church has nothing to do with our salvation in Jesus Christ. The church is a vehicle that God uses to spread the gospel of Jesus. But just because you go to Glenville or you go to a Methodist church, a Catholic church, a Presbyterian church, makes absolutely no difference whether you're going to heaven because you go to a church. What makes a difference? Do you believe in the old rugged cross? Do you believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins? The myth is that all you have to do is be sincere. Reality is, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No one comes to the Father except one way through Jesus Christ. Do you believe that? Let's give him an honor. See, we have to believe that. When I started looking at this sermon, started thinking about this myth, I started thinking about putting the heaven and Memorial Day together. And, and uh, there is a website that's found that you can make a reservation in heaven. You can make that reservation. It's only going to cost you $14.95 for you to make that reservation. <laughs> Guaranteed that when you pass away, you'll go to heaven. Money back guarantee. And if you could, at 20 more dollars to that, you have a full access pass to heaven. Actually a website for that. And there's also another website for the same amount of money. Access to hell. $14.95. I know it's a prank. But you know what? That's what people think that they could do. As long as I give a little bit, as long as I'm sincere, I'll go to heaven. 
Um, there's a grave site found in Tennessee, it says, on the epitaph. Consider, friend, as you pass by, as you are now, so once was I. As I am now, you soon shall be. So prepare, my friend, to follow me. Someone scratched on the bottom of that and said this. To follow you is not my intent until I know which way you went. <laughs> Isn't that true? We can't follow man. We can't look at what man has done. The only thing that we can do is look at what God has done for us. In our culture today, we're, we're, we're focused so much on what the afterlife is and what we could do or what could be done. There's three simple books that you probably have heard of. The first one is 90 Minutes in Heaven by a Baptist preacher. And the other one was Heaven is for Real. And then Heaven and Back. Three simple little books to talk about when they passed or when they lost their breath. They had visions of what heaven was like. They talked about what they were going through. Now, I don't understand that, and I don't, I don't not believe them. But I do know to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord for those that know Jesus Christ. We're going to take a scripture today, and we're going to talk about some aspects of heaven and talk about what we must do to understand heaven is a real place and it's for every person that has put their faith in Jesus Christ. That old rugged cross, we cherish that old rugged cross. You know, there's some things about what the scripture says that we should hold on to. That we should believe. So often, we use the word trampled under our feet. Sometimes what Jesus has done for us. Church, sometimes we just take it for granted, don't we? Sometimes we could talk about what Jesus has done. And sometimes we said, ah, oh, another sermon on Jesus. Another sermon on Jesus? What is the church about if it's not about Jesus? What is the church about if it's not talking about what Jesus Christ has done for us? Okay, yeah, yeah I understand that Jesus has died for you, and I understand that you've accepted him. And I understand that when you pass away, you will go to heaven. And sometimes we can fold our arms and say, huh, I've heard this before. How many times is he going to say John 3, 16? How many times is he going to talk about Jesus? And what we should do when we hear the name of Jesus, what we should do is we should celebrate because of what he has done for us. So maybe somebody else needs to experience Jesus for the very first time. And it's not something that we can just take lightly. It's something that we should proclaim every day of our life. If the church is not about Jesus, the church is dead. If the church loses its focus, if the church is afraid to communicate Jesus, they have blended into the world's philosophy of just go ha be happy. Everybody's going to be okay. God will fix it at the end. God did something for us. He redeemed mankind for a purpose, and that's to have worship and fellowship with him for eternity. And that's why Jesus died on the cross. Jesus, the triune Godhead, was in heaven, and because we broke God's heart, God sent his son to live a perfect life, to be the perfect lamb of God, and to be sacrificed, publicly humiliated, and shed his blood so we could trust in him. And if we don't trust in him, we are not going to heaven. I want to plead to you about that. I don't want you to say, that's oh, another sermon on heaven. It's another sermon about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. It's all about what he has done for us. John chapter 14, verses 1 through 6, says this. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way, you know. And Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going, and how can we know the way? And Jesus said this, other than John chapter 3, verse 16, this is the most powerful verse in the Bible. Do you understand that? The most powerful verse verse in the Bible. If you only re remember two verses, John chapter 3, verse 16, and John chapter 14, verse 6, it would change your world. Jesus said to him, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. What's the next part? 
No one comes to the Father except through me. How important is Jesus now? How important is your life? If we don't understand who Jesus is, if we don't understand what Jesus has done, we will never have the intimacy with Christ. If sometimes we can say GD without thinking about it. Or how many times do we say Jesus because we're upset? How many times do we use those words and it's flip it off of our mouth, but we don't understand the sacrifice that he did? And if we do not respect the name of Jesus, because at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue confess that he is Lord. It is not something that we can just play with. It's something that we have to adore. We have to love him. I just want to give you a few points. The first is Jesus is in his father's house preparing a place for you. Jesus is in heaven. Now, I, I, I hate doing this, but I, I have to do this. In the King James Version, it uses the word mansion. And that, that, I, I want to say this with all due respect. You're not having a mansion. Okay? What you have is you have a room in a mansion. You have a house, God's house, that God is preparing for you a beautiful room with beautiful people that you are in a room that's prepared by God and there's no doors on that room. It is a place prepared for you by God. We're not going to be on an exclusive hill, everybody having their own mansions. No, it is a home. It's a house. It's a family. And that family is going to be together for eternity in a home with no sin and no brokenness and no sadness and no tears. It's a beautiful place. It's something that we long for. I was joking with Vernon just this morning. He was talking about him getting up in age. I told him he's probably got another 10 years here. And we, we hope he has at least 20 years. But he was talking about that. And he said, he said, Bruce, he said, listen. He said, it makes no difference. This is just a time, a life that's here for a second. And it's gone. I'm going to heaven to spend eternity with my wife and with my family. How sweet is that? How sweet is that? That we understand that when we pass from this earth, if we know Jesus Christ, we're going to heaven. And Jesus is preparing a place for us in heaven. The word that Jesus used is the word monet. And it is talking about a room, a room in heaven. I go to prepare a place for you. It's the monet. And I want to say, show me the monet. Show me where I stay. I'm looking forward to that. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1. For we know that if our earthly house, this tent, is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Eternal in the heavens. Now, I'm going to date myself here. When I was a youth pastor, this song came out. And it came out in 1994 by Audio Adrenaline. And uh, you know what it is? Here we go. You want to sing it? Because I'm going to read it. I'm not going to sing it. It says this. Come and go with me to my father's house. Come to go with me to my father's house. It's a big, big house with lots and lots of rooms. A big, big table with lots and lots of food. A big, big yard where we can play football. A big, big house. It's my father's house. That song was popular back in the day. Having all the kids standing up at camps and in the youth singing that song that is my house. It's my house. Get the idea that we're going to heaven. And the only way that we get to heaven is we understand who Jesus Christ really is. But some people do not take that for granted. Some people worry. Some people have no idea in their mind what's going on. Say, so I hope I go to heaven. I hope I did all right. I hope God loves me. I hope I gave enough. I hope I've done enough. I hope I've been good enough. Sometimes they look at Christianity as a weight scale. And let me destroy that myth. You can't be good enough to go to heaven. Can't. We all fail. Zero. Zero percent chance of going to heaven because you're good. And there's zero percent of a chance you go into heaven because you're bad. The reason why you're going to heaven is because you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You could be the biggest heathen in the world 
And if you accept Jesus Christ and accept his forgiveness, guess what? To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. God's forgiveness is forgiveness, all forgiveness. We have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. But Jesus Christ loves us enough and he's died for us that we can have confidence that Jesus Christ has taken me to heaven. Isn't that awesome? You can be certain about spending eternity in heaven. You can have, be certain about doing it. I've heard people say, well, nobody knows for sure. Well, I say, they're wrong. Because 1 John chapter 5, verse 13 says this. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God. Is that you? The name of the Son of God. Who is that? It's Jesus. These things I have written that you believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. That you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. You know, when you believe in Jesus and what he has done for us, trusting in him, putting my faith and my confidence in what Jesus Christ has done for me, I can't get to heaven on my own, and I know Jesus died on me. I can know for sure that I'm dying and going to heaven. I stand at this pulpit many times over the last 20 years. I've done so many funerals. And I tell you what, there are some hard funerals, and there are some very easy funerals. How's that? Funeral very easy. Because when somebody knows Jesus and they know that they've worshipped him and loved him, I have no problem standing up and say, you know what, this person is not here any longer. This person is in heaven. Because of her life, because of her faith, I can smile. Oh, sure, we're going to shed some tears because of the loss. But we're going to gain so much more because we know the access is in heaven. I know I'm going to heaven. I don't have to worry about it. I don't even have to think about it. I worship my Lord Jesus Christ because of what he has done for me. And I know without a doubt what the Bible says. And I believe what the word of God says. So I have confidence in it says that I have knowledge that I'm going to heaven because of my faith in the Lord. I love what John and, and the 23rd Psalm says, David said in the 23rd Psalm, he starts it off, is the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He starts off with my shepherd. But many of us like the first part, but the last verse of Psalm chapter 23, it says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. He didn't say, I hope. He said, I will. He said, I have that confidence. I will dwell in the house of the Lord. I don't have to worry about it because I have confidence in it. And sometimes the church loses that focus. Sometimes we're like the, the shoe salesmen that were asked to go over to Africa. So they moved over to Africa and, and they land off the plane and, and they, they went to different areas. And, and one guy said, I am wasting my time. I'm going back. They don't even wear shoes in Africa. And the other guy got off the plane, and he says, send all the shoes you have. Nobody has shoes here. We have so many clients, we are going to be rich. It all depends on the perspective that we see. Can we look at what Jesus Christ has done for us and say, I have gained heaven? Or do we look at the idea of this? I have to give this up. I don't know if I want to have my faith in Christ because if I know that God is asking me to quit doing this, I don't know if I want to quit it, so I'm just going to ignore Jesus. And so often we have sacrificed our salvation and faith in Christ because we're afraid that we have to give something up because if we honor him, we are going to radically be changed to honor him. So sometimes we have to say, my faith in Christ is more important than the desires that I have because I want to be radically changed to know that Jesus is my Savior. So if I have to sacrifice... What am I sacrificing? Let me boil it down. I am sacrificing 70 years. I don't believe Christianity is a sacrifice at all. But if I have to say, I have to give something up for 70 years to gain eternity, that's not a sacrifice. If God has asked me to serve him in any capacity for 70 years to gain an eternity, that's not a sacrifice. I have a brother, a much older brother. I was probably in kindergarten when he graduated from high school, I think it was. I really don't ever remember him living at the house. And he had a stroke when he was about 20, 
four years old. And he's paralyzed on his right side of his body. And he can, he can hardly talk. And uh, he, he's been that way for, since he's 25 years old. And he's close to 70 now. And I remember a few years ago, we were at the house Christmas time. And we were just talking. And, and uh, you know, I, I'm the preacher of the family. So I get all the theological questions. And uh, he's a believer. And he just said this. He goes, in his broken communication, he says, why did God do this to me? Oh, you know, that's the million dollar question. I don't have those answers. Why? But I can only give him the one theological answer that I have. I said, Richard, I said, I have no idea why. But I said, you have to be faithful to God. Because at the end of your life, the Bible says our life is like a vapor. It's here today and gone tomorrow. At the end of your life, you're going to turn back and you're going to look and you may have some questions now for Jesus. But once you see Jesus face to face, the questions of your life are going to be nothing because you have gained access to heaven for eternity. You're going to sacrifice these 70 years of a broken body to gain access to heaven for eternity with a perfect body. Oh, is it hurt? Yeah, is it hard? Absolutely. But when you look at what you're going to gain, don't get mad at God because of something that happened in your life. Look forward to meeting him. Look forward to knowing that he loves you. He's going to take care of you every step of our life. And then there's a book in heaven with some names in it. It's called the Lamb's Book of Life. The Lamb's Book of Life. Let me give you this. There was a day. I was 19 on my day. That I bowed my knee. And I accepted Jesus Christ to be my Lord and my Savior. I was forgiven. And I need to be forgiven. Okay? I did some things I should have been forgiven for. I, I don't know if I would have forgiven myself. But Jesus forgave me. But when he forgave me. Something supernatural took place. The Bible says. That one person give their life to Christ. The angels of heaven stand up and have a party. They rejoice because one soul has given their heart to Christ. They believed in Christ. What is taking place is the Lamb's book of life is open. Your name is written in the very Lamb's book of life. Nothing could ever blot out your name in the Lamb's book of life. Nothing. You cannot separate your love that God has for you. In Psalms chapter 139, verse 16, your eyes saw the substance, the substance being yet unformed, and in the book they were all written, the days fashioned for me, when as they were done for all time. In your book they were written. Everything and every person that's given to their life to Christ their name is written in the Lamb's book of life. In Luke chapter 10, verse 20. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Revelation 21, 27. But there shall be no more means to enter into anything that defiles or causes an abomination or a lie, but those only who's written in the Lamb's book of life. Revelation 21, 15. Anyone not found written in the Lamb's book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Does the Bible talk about hell? It does. It's taboo. It's easy to talk about heaven. It's very difficult sometimes to talk about hell. Sometimes we have to understand the lake of fire. Hell was created for demons and those angels. But when we reject Christ... We do not gain access. We don't go to sleep and stay in the grave. Our soul goes to heaven or it's thrown into the lake of fire. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. Each and every one of us should come to repentance. But the last one, your confirmation number. Have you ever gone to a hotel and they don't find your name? I was in Denver with a couple of my preacher buddies, uh, Brad Wilkerson and Gary Pinion, 
And uh, we were going to a conference in Denver, and my job was to make the host hotel reservations. They were paying for the food and the gas, and my job was to get the hotel. And uh, this is when I thought I could do everything on my own, and I soon found out that uh, I need to have a couple secretaries to make sure I don't make any mistakes. So now Brenda and Connie always make all my reservations. But uh, I thought I made the reservation. I called them, and they didn't have our name. And it was a uh, weekend where there was a, a conference in town, and, and they didn't have my name. And they said, sir, do you have your confirmation number? Oh, no. Well, I'm sorry, you, we, we're, we're booked. So I went to hotel after hotel after hotel to try to get a room, and I finally found a, a little hotel someplace that they booked me, but the confirmation number would have been very nice because that confirmation number would have proven to them that I had a hotel and I needed that room. And that is exactly what we need. We need to have a confirmation number. And you do have a confirmation number. And we've read it already today. That confirmation number that you have is JN316. That's on your heart. Because when you have JN316, it says this, and put it where it needs to be. When it says world, put your name in there. Everybody shout your name when we get to that point. For God so loved Bruce Thomas. Let's do that again. For God so loved that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's your confirmation number. For God so loved Bruce Thomas that he gave his only begotten son that if I believe in him, I will never, ever perish and I'll have everlasting life. It is the greatest joy. What's that word believe? It just means I trust. When I believe in Christ, when I have faith in Christ, it just means I trust. I have confidence what the Bible says. I have confidence what Jesus has done. And I have confidence. I put trust in that he loves me and he's going to take care of me every step of the way. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8. For by grace you've been saved through faith and not of yourself. Nothing that you've done. It is the very gift of God. The gift of God. I, Wednesday is my birthday. I'm not telling you that for any other reason, but uh, Wednesday is my birthday. and I turn 50, none of your business. <laughs> I turn 54 years old. Can you believe that? I'm 54 years old. I had some they had, bonehead ladies had this <laughs> graduation reception, and they asked me, said, Bruce, how old are you? I said, I know I look old. I've had white hair since I've been 35 years old. I told them I was 54 years old next week. And they said, they said oh. She said, oh, I thought you were only 52. And I said, oh. uh, she's a liar. She knew, she knew I was older than that. But, but you know, it's not of myself. It is the gift of God. On my birthday, I'm going to receive gifts. I'm going to get cards, just like you do on your birthday. The greatest gift that anyone could ever give to me or give to you is the gift of eternal life. It is a gift that never goes away. Every present, every card, every email, every Facebook post that I'm going to get on Wednesday is temporal. It's here today. It's gone tomorrow. You're going to give me a card and it's going to have Cracker Barrel on it. I'm going to use that card and I'm going to forget all about it in a week. That's a, I like Cracker Barrel, if you don't know that. I like Red Lobster and Cracker Barrel and Abuelos. Any, any thing that's saying steak and uh, potatoes, I'm a happy camper. But everything that you get for your birthday is temporal. It's gone. It's, I thank you for it. But the gift of God is what? Eternal. It is eternal. The greatest gift that we could ever have is the gift of God. But let me tell you one last verse. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through who? Jesus. Why is he in the Bible all the time? Can we? There is no other name. There is nothing else that we can do. 
We gain access to heaven because of a gift that Jesus provided for you. It's not a pleasant gift. It's not an easy gift. It's a sacrificial gift. Somebody had to die to give you that gift. Somebody voluntarily died to give you that gift. What do you do with the gift? Ah, oh, thank you. I hope, I hope I spend it someday. When somebody died to give you a gift, I think we should honor it. I think we should cherish it. I think we should say thank you. Because one day, we're going to cash in this life and we're going to give that gift back to him. And he's going to say, come in. Well done, my good and faithful servant. See, not all roads go to heaven. There's only one road. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 13 and 14, it said there are two ways, two roads that you can choose. The narrow way, which leads to God. Or the wide road that leads to self or leads to hell. And he said, many will choose the broad way, but only few will choose the narrow way. Because the narrow way is harder. The narrow way has to have sacrifice. It takes commitment. It takes time. It even takes money and resources. But it's a commitment that at the end of that road, the experience is heaven. So I have a question for you. Every one of us. Have you taken the right road? Have you even taken the road at all? There's times in our life where we have to make decisions. And those decisions are tough. I remember the last time I was flying back from Bangalore, um, India. And I was sitting on a plane and it was a, about a 13 hour flight. And I was stuck beside this guy. Nice guy. But have you ever heard those guys that just talk 13 hours? Oh my gosh. I even acted like I sleep half the time just so he'd shut up. But <laughs> we had this good conversation at the end though. He goes, he goes, what do you do for a living? And I said, I said, well, I'm a preacher. He, he used a couple other words. He said, I've never really met a blank, blank preacher before. And I said, I said, well, they're not all bad. He goes, he goes well, what, what's being a preacher? And I said, I said, well, let me tell you what being a preacher is. And I kind of just started sharing the gospel. And I said, have you ever received Jesus as your Lord and Savior? He goes, he goes nope. Don't think I have. And I don't think I will. And I said, have you ever thought about death? He goes, try not to think about that at all. I said, well, one day, you won't have a choice. One day, you're going to stand before God. And your name is not in the Lamb's Book of Life. I'm telling you right now, you're going to remember this day that a preacher stood with you in a plane and told you the plan of salvation. And you're going to stand before God. And you're going to pray. And you're going to wish that you'd have listened to that preacher on the plane. Because if you don't, and you pass, you won't go to heaven. He said, thanks for talking to me. He shut up. I should have done that earlier on the plane, right? I guess. <laughs> but you know what? I can't make him, and you can't make anybody give their life to Christ. Well, all we can do, talk about Jesus. Talk about Jesus. Let the Holy Spirit do his work. Because there's only one way to heaven, and that's through Jesus.